It's his choice vine. Interesting. So there was this understanding, there was a golden vine in front of the temple in Jerusalem. So if you go to the original temple in Jerusalem, there was a golden vine that they had put out in front. That was very important. So the vine had become a symbol of the nation of Israel. And they thought that that made them all in all. They thought they were the vine. Well, now Israel, as the vine of God planted in the promised land, because God did plant, Israel is the vine in the promised land, has now been replaced by Jesus. Jesus now says, I am the true vine, meaning no one can grow unless they are rooted in him. Now, while the vine was a symbol of Israel as a nation, it was also used in scripture as a sign of degradation, a deformed state of spiritual growth, meaning bad or even moral decline. Now, why is this important? Okay, Isaiah's prophecy, prophet Isaiah spoke of Israel as a vineyard, yielded, and it said, he said, that there as a vineyard, Israel yielded wild grapes, <coughs> wild ass of a man, and so Jeremiah said that Israel had become degenerate and a wild vine. All right, so what's, where am I going with all this? So, okay, so being from Israel did not make you automatically the true vine of God. Okay, Christ is the true vine. And in fact, if, you know, and, and here's what's important. The fact that you are a Jew will not save you. Even though... They were the chosen people. It's the same with being Catholic. There is no salvation outside the Catholic Church, but just because you're Catholic does not mean you'll be saved. Okay, and now we're talking not again just the four walls of the Catholic Church, but the body of Christ and Christ's body is the church. We do hold talks on that. Now, Jesus is the vine of God, and you must be the branches always joined to him not just on Sunday, not just on Sunday. The branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it is connected to the vine, which is Jesus. Why? Because the vine provides this life-giving sap, okay, uh, that goes to the branch. And we can think of that as the Holy Spirit. Now, what do we call the Holy Spirit? Fruit. Fruit. This is why it all pulls together. So we see the whole Trinity here. The gardener is the father. He says, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. Okay, so the gardener is the father who gives us life through the vine, who is Jesus, the son, by the life-giving sap, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So when you are open to that, you will receive that fruit. You will bear fruit and a tree is known by its fruit. That's how you will be seen in the eyes of God. Now, vines bear two kinds of branches, one that bears fruit and one that actually bears only leaves, no fruit. So if it grows wild on its own, it may produce leaves and not fruit, just leaves instead of fruit. And then it blocks the sun to the other branches. So other branches will become weak because they're not receiving enough light. These branches that do not bear fruit are then cut away so then they don't drain the strength from the good branches that are bearing fruit. Okay, this is what happens when we are a bad influence on others. When we are living bad examples. Are we the branches that are only full of leaves, blocking the light of Christ in the lives of others that could bear fruit, but we are not leading them to Christ? This happens when we profess without practice, saying words without deeds. Brother just read in the second reading, um, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. That is Catholic. And so 
we may be Christians, but we may be useless branches. All right? All leaves, no fruit. So is it all leaves and no fruit make you a dull boy? Because you're not living it. So to finish this, since God is the vine, Jesus is the vine, we must take our strength and energy from him as the branches, not ourselves. We do this when we spend time with him, especially in prayer, most of all coming to the sacraments, and we must read the Bible. We must do these things. We must obey him, do his will. We cannot do his work if we separate ourselves from him and do everything on our own, all right? And so when we would, in that case, we would be more like the useless branch that bears no fruit. Now, the only thing that could be done with that is to burn it, all right? The dead wood cut from the vine was burned. That is Jesus telling you about your judgment, all right? And so remember, I, Isaiah's song of the vineyard, God is the gardener, and he will be forced to cut that which bears no fruit. So don't be that type of branch with no fruit. So the main point here, Jesus is the vine, the Father is the vine grower, all right? We know this. And as the gardener, the Father wants abundant harvest so he cuts off the useless branches to help the good. Remember to those, I never understood that, to those who already have, more will be given. But to those who don't, what the little they have will be taken away. This is a perfect example. Um, to those who have, even more will be given. To those who have little, it will be taken. So if you are giving little fruit and somebody else is given more, they will be given the light you will be cut down. And so if a branch bears no fruit, it's cut and burned. If it does bear fruit, it will be left and pruned. We don't want to forget this. Jesus says, if it does, the one that does, he prunes so that it'll bear more fruit. Now this can hurt, right? This can cause suffering and trials as we are trimmed of our selfishness, but it's good. This allows us to get even more light. It's, it's the greater good of like suffering, for example. Um, so which branch are you? Are you the one left or the one taken away? You know, that's a misunderstanding of the rapture. Um, Scott Hahn had a great talk on the rapture and he says, you know, they got it kind of backwards. Uh, the rapture isn't that the good are taken and the bad are left behind. He says, it's the opposite. Look at Noah. What happened? The good weren't taken. The bad were taken. The good were left behind. And so this whole fundamentalist view of the rapture is actually, Scott Hahn says, the opposite. And it makes sense here because the ones, the branches that are left are the good ones. The bad ones are taken away. So we don't want to be that bad branch. And if we're a good branch that bears fruit, the Lord's going to prune us. It does not, it's not something we like. I remember Rocky, my big yellow lab, I so missed him uh, when I came to the Marian Fathers. I had to give him away. And uh, boy, that was hard. I, I, I loved that dog. And he was the biggest baby and when I went to try to cut his nails, you would have thought, like the neighbor came over one day, I was trying to cut his nails in the garage. Or you should have heard it. It did sound like that I was killing that poor dog. And I hadn't even clipped it yet. And he's rolling over and howling. And, and, and so when we finally did get those nails cut, you pruned them. And, 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 and it's much better. And that might hurt a little bit. Um, it might be a uh, traumatic experience, but the suffering when our Lord prunes us ends up bearing more fruit. And this is the meaning of the vine and the branches. Um, I asked for prayers for my father today. He's back in the hospital. Um, heart just keeps failing and failing. And God bless. I mean, you just never know how God works. All these years I've been praying for my mom and my dad's just been in the background taking care of her. And um, yeah, it looks like the miracle with my mom and so many graces through prayers, but kind of forgot about my dad there. 
and, and now my dad is the one that's is by far in more health trouble. And, and, but you know, the beauty of it, I said this a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, he was, he's a tough guy, didn't really base his life on religion. We always laugh how I became a priest out of our family is really amazing because there just was no priest, there was no real faith. We just, we were Sunday Catholics at best, but I do thank him for that because we did go every Sunday. I remember when the priest would elevate the host, he'd always whisper over to me, that's when Jesus enters the host, which is actually incorrect, but God bless him for his effort. Um, and, and, and so for that, I'm grateful. Um, but, but now, going through the suffering that he is, his real focus is praying the rosary every day. Um, really, that is his big, big focus. And um, on one of the YouTube comments I was answering just this morning, the answer or the question said, and you can see it, I left it up there. It said, Father Chris, do real men pray the rosary? Well, if you know my father, he's the man's man and a Vietnam vet. And I, I read that comment and I, I chuckled. I said, and I answered, absolutely. Because it just, I, I found it so interesting and timely. Father Chris, do real men pray the rosary. I can tell you, those are the realest of men, are the ones that pray the rosary. The women have been keeping this world together. The women have been the faithful ones throughout most of history. It's time for us men now to step up. And, uh, and, and here's my father is, is a great example. Um, nobody was tougher. Uh, nobody was more worldly. But now here he is, um, knowing that the most important thing he can do every day is pray that rosary. So for a guy that for years was a branch with no fruit, um, has now been pruned and, and, and has gone through that suffering and is now bearing much fruit. It's never too late. God will use you.